Hello, hello. Welcome back. Welcome back to the Hello Cannot podcast. Gong Si Fa Tsai. Happy Chinese New Year to everyone. Happy Lunar New Year to all of my Chinese friends and everyone as well. Um, welcome back. I know it's been two weeks since I last posted a, a episode of the podcast. Apologies for that. Um, a lot of things has been happening. So I'm just trying to find some time uh, to get them sorted out and Today I'm able to get some time to uh, to just record down my latest podcast. So how's everyone's uh, Chinese New Year so far? I I hope that everyone is able to see their friends and families, uh, whether it's via Zoom, via uh, FaceTime, or via WhatsApp calls. You know, because of this pandemic, this is going to this has been an interesting Chinese New Year so far. And it's the only time where we're not really physically capable of meeting everyone, especially if you're not from town, right? So, for everyone who has had to have a Zoom dinner uh, with their parents or family for the reunion dinner, um, my heartfelt thoughts go to you. Uh, thank you for not breaking any of the SOPs and not even causing any more problems. Unfortunately, for uh, the night before. Chinese Day, uh, Chinese New Year Day number one, which is uh, what we call as the Nian San Shu one, where usually a lot of families will have reunion dinners, right? And I've been seeing a lot of photos on Facebook whereby, just looking somewhere near where I'm staying, which is uh, one Utama shopping mall, it was packed, it was filled with people, and everyone's just bringing their families around, you know, just to go walk around, have dinner, and then go home. Maybe they'll be doing even a bit of shopping, and I'm just trying to, you know, understand. Look, we're still in the middle of a pandemic. The number of cases have not even gone down yet, right? And due to selfish reasons, you will, you would, you're willing to go to um, a shopping mall just to enjoy your Chinese New Year. Please lah, come on. <laughs> I mean, we're Chinese people. Don't be so selfish, right? Look at what has happened throughout the past year. You know, we've we have had uh, Hari Raya, we've had Deepavali, all of these big events for other races that were also impacted by this pandemic, this COVID situation. And even back then, if they moved about, I I know there are a lot of Chinese people who will be the first to comment and say, you know, why are you breaking SOP? Why are you moving around? But when it comes to their own, you know, their own festivals. They break their own SOPs, so this is a very hypocritical situation. And please, guys, don't do this. You know, <sighs> the numbers when uh, when Chinese New Year started was still was going down, right? So uh, I think we were averaging about two thousand five hundred ish, you know, uh, between the first within the first ten days. But um, now the numbers are going back up. So please, please, please. I know the vaccine is just around the corner. We still do not know. The side effects. We do not know what's happening yet. So, until we get further information, just stay home, okay, guys. And you know, is I know the feeling of getting a physical red angpao feels much better. You know, feeling the cash. You know that the brand new cash. You know that comes out from the bank. Well, just not this year, guys. Just not this year. So just get your e angpaos and just send out. I I wish there was a functionality. You know, maybe in whatever mobile pre -pay,、uh, payment apps, right? They can say, okay, hey, I'm going to request、uh, angpao from my family members. I'm just going to send them based on their phone numbers and say, hey, your nephew is looking for you to get angpao. Are you willing to give, right? If there is that kind of functionality, then maybe we wouldn't have to feel so poor during this time. <laughs> All right, okay. So、um, let's jump into the main topic for today.、Um, today. I just want to discuss on a very interesting topic, which basically revolves around an experiment. For those of you who have read the title but you do not know what it is,、uh, what this experience experiment is about, basically today we'll be talking about the marshmallow test. And this is an age-old test that was created decades ago, and it is it was used to judge a kid's mental maturity. So basically, this marshmallow experiment was founded by two professors. From Stanford University in 1970, this is a study on delayed gratification, right? And it was targeted specifically at children. So, in this study, 
you know, children, they were given a choice of, uh, well, they're given two choices or two options, essentially. The scientist basically goes up to the children and say, you can choose between receiving one marshmallow now versus receiving two marshmallow later, right? You just have to be patient, just wait for a moment, and you'll get double the rewards. Now, the research didn't just end there. You know, after the children made their choices, what happens next is that these researchers continue to monitor the development, the life changes, the, you know, like how this child grows and what they became. Okay? So it went through multiple years until the kid was significantly uh, old enough, right? Maybe they went to college. So what the researchers found at the end of this so-called timeline experiment, um, they found that the children who were able to wait longer for the two marshmallows seems to have a better life outcome, right? So basically they have better SAT scores, better health, uh, more successful careers. So they say that having self-control at an early age, you know, the ability to understand delayed gratification for increased rewards, right? These are considered the signs of a children being able to think far enough, to plan far enough and say, hey, I'm willing to wait to get more rewards. But don't you think this is just a very basic natural instinct for children? Like, imagine you're having, like you're having a pet dog, okay? If you put a treat right in front of the dog, the dog is definitely going to grab it regardless of whether it's going to find out it's going to have two treats later. But what they do know for dogs, right, is that they learn from experience. You can actually train dogs or train pets in general to wait and then reward them significantly based on their behavior. And that's basically the same way as how we educate our children, the same way that we teach our kids waiting is crucial. Okay, I'll elaborate a bit more on that later. Okay, but let's, to a certain extent, I would agree that kids that are able to wait and, re and you know, to pick up their two marshmallows, they have already developed mentally ahead of their peers so that they would get rewards earlier, okay? Now, it's very similar to when you're playing a game, right? Imagine if you had the option to take, let's say, $10 now versus $20 later, and you had to spend those ten, that $10 for food, right? So the first kid that grabs the ten dollars, you know, even though they have the money, they're going to spend it immediately, every single cent of it on food. So that leaves them with no money. Whereas the second kid, he's basically going to have twenty dollars, ten dollars which will be spent on food, and a remaining amount of money, ten dollars, which he can then use to do whatever he wants. So with that additional ten dollars, he can, like if he's smart enough, right? He could use it to invest in shares or stock market and stuff like that, and that is what will pull him further ahead uh, along the down the line, right? So if he's able to do that, then of course he's going to be significantly ahead of the rest of his peers who chose one marshmallow. But it still doesn't mean that any of the other children will not. I mean, they will eventually learn waiting is going to be a very crucial part of their life and eventually they may even catch up. So we have to give them the benefit of the doubt. I mean, everyone learns, you know, they learn and they pick up new, new life experiences, new lessons taught in their own pace, you know, their own time. And this does not necessarily mean that they'll always remain as a one marshmallow kid forever. I hope by now that, you know, you can see how fragile this experiment is. Um, to imagine, you know, that it took the researchers close to 30 years, you know, like in the year 2000, where they finally found out that this experiment is wrong, right? There has been a lot of studies uh, from New York University and University of California that suggest an important factor in a kid's decision, and that is affluence. Now, Affluence basically means the state of wealth or in human terms, how rich you are, okay? As part of, you know, trying to recognize the role that how affluence plays, right? Like how does it impact the decision making of a child? There's been a correlation whereby kids, you know, if they're from, they come from a wealthier family, they are taught to wait longer for more significant rewards. 
And on the other side of the spectrum, basically you have people from uh, families with lower income. And you know that these kind of opportunities don't come by too often. So the minute that they see an opportunity, they're going to grab it. Like put yourself in the shoes of a starving child. Okay? If you're presented with food, like maybe one bun right now versus two buns two hours later, who knows, you might be dead before you, know, you get your hands on those two buns. So the only option, the only legit option that you have right now is to get that one bun, eat it up, and then at least survive for the next few days or hours or days. But it wasn't until late, you know, where they have started questioning further and they realized there is another vital preceding factor before affluence and that is called experience. So every single one of us are basically defined and determined based on a few conditions, right? And one of them being experience. In a way, if you look at it from a, from a mathematical solution perspective, we are all basically a sum of our experiences. Everything combined into one that really makes us who we are. And yet, it is also this same concept of experience that gives kids their personalities. So you can base, I hope you are able to see how experiences defines us and the actions that we make, right? So like the example where a kid who is hungry, they're not going to wait for two marshmallows. Now, let's look into a parallel universe where imagine if you're a scientist, right? And you choose to offer a child whether they will get one or two marshmallows. Now, think of it where if the child has chosen two marshmallows and basically when it's time to reward them, you say, I'm sorry, there are no marshmallows for you. Actually, now, just taking a step back and really thinking about it, even if for both types of options, right, you can choose to not give them any marshmallows. Um, so let's say if you're a one marshmallow kid, you know, I offer you one, but instead I do not give you any at all. Uh, for the kid who has chosen the two marshmallow path, you know, he waits a certain amount of time, and when the time comes, you're not going to give him two as well. Okay, but I think that the lesson it teaches is very different between the one marshmallow kit versus the two marshmallow kit. So let's just take the one marshmallow kit as an example. Imagine you're being promised one marshmallow, but in an unfortunate twist, the researcher tells you or your parents tell you that, hey, it was all a lie. There were no marshmallows to begin with. You're not getting any. And imagine the kid will basically be disappointed. You know, he will he will no longer like the person, you know, they won't think too fondly of the person. And this basically causes distrust and insecurity. But because this was an option that was given to them as an instant reward, they are able to move past it quicker, you know, to just adapt and move on with life. So maybe what's going on through this kid's mind is that, hey, I was promised one instant marshmallow, I don't get it now. I have sacrificed enough, close to nothing, and my current state is the same as before this experiment ever began, okay? So you, get, you didn't give me one marshmallow, it's fine, I lose nothing, I just don't get my marshmallow, I'm going to move on with life, I might hate you, but that's fine. Now we're going to move on to the second group of kids, and here is where it gets interesting. So similar to the one marshmallow kids, uh, the two marshmallow geniuses will also leave empty-handed as well. But the experience and the lesson that they're going to learn is going to be more painful. So being asked to wait, you know, to sacrifice time to only end up with nothing, I think that's a very painful experience. And to translate that to an adult perspective, right? Imagine you've been working very hard for that uh, increment in salary or for that promotion, and uh, your manager or basically your team lead says, hey, um, you have one year to achieve all of these targets and then you'll get promoted. But as hard as you worked when the time comes, they say, I'm sorry, there's no budget. We do not have any uh, slots available. There will be no promotion, no increment in salary. And imagine all of the effort you put in just to aim to strive for this goal and it, ref and it fires back at you. You're definitely not going to take this well, correct? Correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm sure that there are a lot of us who have, you know, who have sacrificed way too much and the returns, the rewards just doesn't justify how much that we have sacrificed. But maybe some of these people, uh, the two marshmallow geniuses, 
they will be, they will choose to continue to believe in the system, right? Because maybe this time around, due to the pandemic, right? For instance, um, you're not there is insufficient funds to really get promoted. But in the event that once the company picks up in terms of uh, in terms of its profit, its growth, then you'll definitely be on the waiting list to get promoted. So in that scenario, um, we can understand there is legit reason. So potentially these two marshmallow kids, they will continue waiting for that promotion. But but that's not going to apply to everyone else as well. So there are going to be people who are going to turn into a one marshmallow kid. So rather than taking the risk for potentially more rewarding future, right? Their instincts will kick in to remind them that if there's a, a reward that's going to be present, I'm going to take it immediately. So that's like saying I'm going to go to the manager and say, hey, if you want me to work so much, give me the promotion now. If not, I'm not going to put in the effort because there's no guarantee in terms of getting that increment or promotion. Yeah, okay. <laughs> um, that usually never goes well with your managers or with your company directors or whoever, but that is what they feel like whenever they feel betrayed or they feel disappointed or they feel like they got backstabbed. And this reflects a lot in life as well as we are all basically a product of the system around us. So just looking into bank financial deposits or even unit trusts, if you guys know about that, these are all examples of long-term rewards. They are there to earn you additional income through interest, but they are definitely not risk-free. So that's where you have to make the decision to say, where does my money go to? Or what am I willing to wait for and which ones I'm not willing to? So I, I just want to also share a personal experience, you know, on on the matter. So about five years ago, I bought my first car, right? This first car that was owned by my, uh, that was under my name. I was excited at the fact, you know, that, okay, finally, I have a car of my own. I have the freedom to go anywhere I want. But traveling around so much basically means that you need to perform maintenance, right? And at that given point of time, I was never expected that I would be involved in any major accidents based on my, my, my way of driving because I'm very careful and cautious. So um, based on the recommendation of the maintenance uh, factory, I actually subscribe for a maintenance service package that is paid in advance, which basically saves me money in the long run. But life works in mysterious ways, right? So before I could fully enjoy the benefits of this maintenance package that I bought, I was part of a four car pile up on the highway after a rainy day, okay? I was the middle car and my car was basically total, uh, the engine was wrecked. I, I even experienced an airbag blowing up in my face. Now, how many of you guys can say that? Because how many of you guys have gotten into an accident so serious that the airbag just basically blows up? So my car was just in a state of, I mean, the wreckage was so bad that it was in a state of beyond recognition. So I went through the entire process of uh, making a police report and looking, getting my insurance agents to come and look at the car. What I did not know was that this entire maintenance package that I subscribed is basically tied to a car. So it doesn't matter who the owner is, the maintenance service package is only relevant for that specific car. It is neither refundable or even transferable. Even though I showed them the evidence from, uh, from insurance right, of my car wreckage, I had lost easily two-thirds of the, package rema the package's remaining value that went unused. And from that incident onwards, I've basically been converted to a single marshmallow kit whenever it comes to maintenance packages. I am only willing to pay each time my car gets uh, serviced. I'm not going to pay in advance anymore. And it's not necessarily a bad thing. I just learned that, you know, when I'm being taken advantage of uh, these unfair situations, it just sticks in my mind like glue, right? Reminding me to just not repeat the same mistakes again. And hope that will be uh, also a good lesson, a good sharing for you guys out there. Because if you get into an accident and if you did subscribe for advanced maintenance service package, um, just be aware if your car can no longer is beyond redemption, right? It's total, then you're going to lose that entire package. Okay, 
All right, so I hope what I'm sharing today, you know, uh, brings some thought to you guys on regarding the marshmallow experiment. The main takeaway is that experiments and researchers are they're usually not accurate most of the time. There are many factors, you know, that they do not take into consideration. And that is the preferred method because that is how they want to manipulate to skew the thinking of its audiences, right? I hope everyone listening knows more on the marshmallow experiment now and basically what a con job it is. So for anyone interested to find out more, um, feel free to Google online and see what uh, if they have any further developments on the marshmallow experiment. Um, hope you guys enjoyed this uh, podcast. I know it's a bit unique, but... Okay, guys, um, I hope you guys will look forward to listening to the next episode. I'm going to get my wife to join to participate because we'll be sharing on the topic of depression. Uh, I think it's Yu Yu Zhen in Mandarin. Um, yeah, so basically this is depression is something that myself and my wife have gone through throughout our lives. And sometimes these kind of feelings, they do resurface, right? And I understand that there are a lot of people that are going through depression as well. And there is no way to really go around it. Because when you're going through depression and there's no one around you who is able to understand how it feels like to be in depression, it's only going to spiral down a rabbit hole. And it's, you, you're never going to want to, you know, to kick off the next day. You don't want to wake up. You just want everything to end at that point point of time. It's it's a very serious and sensitive topic and I want to bring that up. I'm, I'll be sharing more on that so hopefully you guys will stay tuned and listen to our next episode. So until then, I hope you guys will have a great time. Please take care, stay safe, follow the SOP. Do not go to the malls. If you see that there are a lot of people, just bail, just go home, okay? Alright, so if you like enjoy this content, please feel free to like, share and subscribe. Welcome again to the Hello Canal podcast and please stay safe.